Hello, my name is Scott Walsweger. I uh, work at Imagine Technologies based out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, today we're going to talk about the power automation and you know, just kind of give some high level overviews of some concepts and then uh, Kelly Pulaski is going to go take over from Advanced Drainage Systems and talk specifically about how they uh, pursued automation in their industry and what their what problems they were trying to solve with that automation. So today's agenda is going to be uh, why now automate, uh, why automate, um, a little bit of an overview of ADS's journey to automation that has been uh, progressing over the last couple of years. And then I'm going to come back and talk about the different types of automation and the way that we th think about automation at Imaginative Technologies. So why now? Um, most people uh, pursue these problems every day in, the, in, their, in their careers. And, and right now, labor costs are at all-time high. Uh, talent pools, very difficult to find somebody to uh, do a job, um, especially high-skilled jobs. Um, customers' expectations is uh, our customers demand more from us, easier to do business with us. Um, it doesn't matter what the industry is, whether you're a civil engineer or an architect, customers' expectations at the end of the day are ease of doing business and modern methods of collaboration. Um, competition, uh, the, the competitors out there might be doing something uh, more automated than you in reducing their costs and making them more competitive than you. Um, advances in technology, I think this is kind of the critical thing that uh, that we have today that we didn't have perhaps two or three years ago. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail about this as the presentation goes on. But uh, today, technology with all the automation platforms that do exist, it is possible to automate things um, in a much more cost-effective manner than it has been perhaps in the past. Um, there's all sorts of new technology out there that is helping with developing automations in every business today. Um, economic uncertainty is we don't, there's a lot of speculation as what's going to happen in the markets in the next couple of years and upcoming six, 12 months. With all that uncertainty, how do we plan for hiring? How do we plan for um, considering automation in lieu of hiring? Where where can we leverage our resources and our technology and our tools better? So why automate? You know, and I think this is the a lot of what Kelly's going to address in her presentation and why ADS chose to um, to pursue some automation, and as that journey went on, some things change. And, and generally speaking, I think most people go to automation to increase efficiency in their in their processes, whether that whatever that is, um, improve productivity, meaning hey, I, I need to do more with less people, um, which can also relate to efficiency as well. Um, improve accuracy, making sure that data is transferred between one application and another or one data pool in another data pool so that you don't have people fat fingering numbers in or misplacing decimal places or um, typing item numbers in incorrectly. Again, uh, enhance the customer experience. Um, if you're making any kind of products that go into buildings or into a civil site like ADS does, is how do we, how do we treat those customers? And give them a higher end experience with our organization and how they interact with the data that our organization is providing them. Um, better data management, and I hear this probably most frequently out of almost all conversations is uh, we have data, we have so much data, but disconnected data streams and how do we, how do we connect that data and, and make sure that we are leveraging the right data at the right time for the right person. You know, so from anything from, you know, an order that's procured to a change order to um, the issues that are found in the field with manufactured products, how do we, how do we manage all that data that's coming into us in a, in a more effective way so we don't have conflicting information? Cost savings, that's, you know, at the end of the day, why most people choose automations is, you know, you're trying to reduce your labor pool costs. Um, you're trying to reduce the... Um, the loss of productivity by people doing manual processes, um, and, and lastly, improve compliance. Um, standardization, um, oftentimes people order things incorrectly. How do we improve the order and make sure that the order is compliant with our objectives of the design? Uh, with that, I'm gonna transition over to ADS and Kelly, and Kelly's gonna do a little bit of overview of ADS's journey 
uh, around um, automation, why they chose to do automation, and some of the lessons that they learned throughout that path. All right, thank you, Scott. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Um, many of those things that Scott just touched upon are exactly what we have gone through in our journey. Um, so appreciate that great setup. And also um, thank you just for everybody for joining us today. I think we have a great turnout here. We appreciate your time. Um, and thank you, Imagine It, just for giving us the opportunity to present to you all today. So the agenda that I'm going to go through is just give everyone a brief introduction to ADS and who we are, uh, why ADS looked to automation, and it's going to touch on many of those things that Scott just mentioned, how we determined the business value of automation to pursue it, some of the results that we're seeing as an effect of doing automation, of course, you know, has not come without its challenges and lessons learned. So we wanted to share that with everyone here today and then talk a little bit about specifically what did we do based on our business and our industry and then do even a little bit of a live demo of one of the tools that we've implemented. So first, I just want to dive into a little bit about who ADS is. And really simply put for ADS, our reason is water. ADS stands for Advanced Drainage Systems, and we are focused on advancing the world's water infrastructure, and we're extremely focused on sustainability. Our promise here at ADS is to protect and manage water, the world's most precious resource, safeguarding our environment and our communities. Our mission is to provide clean water management solutions to communities and deliver unparalleled service to our customers, which we'll certainly talk about through this presentation. To do this, we provide innovative and sustainable water management solutions to address the water management challenges of our customers. We really care about the life cycle of a raindrop, and we offer products to, capture, to help capture, convey, store, and treat rainwater before it's released back into the environment. And overall, you know, our history, we've been around for over 50 years now. Last year, we were around $2.7 billion of annual revenue. We've got over 12 billion feet of our pipe in service around the world today um, and we're the largest plastic recycler in the United States. We recycle over 600 million pounds of plastic every year and it's a great story to tell because we are taking single-use plastics, we're keeping them out of landfills and oceans and we're putting them into products that are being used to strengthen our subsurface water management infrastructure. And we're doing this while meeting all the industry standards for strength and durability. And these are products that will be in service for decades. And we're really incredibly proud of the work we're doing around sustainability. Um, and a few other stats here just for everyone to get to know ADS really quickly. But wanted to give that brief overview before really diving into our main content. But let's do that now because that's why we're here. You know, why? Why did ADS look to automation for our business? Um, at ADS, you know, I talked about that unparalleled customer support. Um, we have a large internal support team consisting of engineers and technicians that has expanded tremendously as our business has grown. And this is just one of the areas that differentiates us in the marketplace from our competitors. Um, and as I'm sure many of you on the call have experienced, and as Scott just mentioned, over the past many years, the talent pool and the labor costs have made this type of growth really challenging. So we needed to look into ways to make our team more efficient to avoid excessive headcount growth. And one of many areas that we focused on was the AutoCAD design layout work being done by the team. And our goal was to find a way to automate a lot of the repetitive workflows and allow the team to really increase their productivity. This would also allow the team to focus more on the design and functionality of the system rather than the tedious tasks and workflows. 
So we began our focus with increasing our own internal efficiency. Um, and you kind of heard from Scott, sometimes you start somewhere and it starts to grow. And for us, really over time, we realized that there was additional benefit when providing automation tools for our customers for their own self-service. And really, in fact, just having a digital tool of some sort is kind of an expectation of customers. If you think about when you want to go and buy that next car, you're able to go on and configure your color and your engine and all the different things and even see an estimated price um, immediately. So there is that expectation out there of having a certain amount of digital tools available. And we really pride ourselves on even setting that expectation ahead of our competition. So having this tool available externally allowed us to also reach part of our customer base that just preferred self-service over traditional paths, which was an added benefit. And at ADS, we are fully invested in our digital tool portfolio and just continuing to build that out all within the aspects of automation for what we're doing here. Okay. So we, we knew what we wanted to do, but as like anywhere, you have to be able to define that business value in a quantifiable way to get the funding to proceed. So I'm gonna talk about what we did here at ADS to do that. So three main areas for us. Um, when we looked at increasing the internal team efficiency, that meant increasing our productivity and that meant long-term headcount avoidance. So as I mentioned already, we saw just a ton of growth here and we place a lot of value on having that technical support team available, but it was getting very challenging to add the amount of headcount head year over year. So in our business case for automation, we showed how automation increases efficiency, increasing productivity, and it ultimately reduced that rate of overhead growth year over year. The second area was around customer self-service, and we found that that would actually decrease the demand on this internal support team, also allowing us to avoid you know, the excessive amount of heads that we were adding. Um, this has resulted in decreased demand. Um, we can quantify how much work will be done by our customer to show the value of that work shifting from an internal resource, that full-time head, to somebody externally. And you can really look at a dollar value associated with that when you kind of compare the rate that you are going versus if you just have some additional maybe operational costs of what you look to implement. Um, typically that automation is gonna be much more efficient. And then lastly, around customer self-service, um, Again, not something we focused on originally, but this has been an area of lead generation for us um, and has helped us to increase specification and result in just incremental sales dollars for ADS. So this is a real lead generator for us and we can project incremental number of projects to equate to a sales value. Of course, keeping in mind, you know, what our addressable markets are uh, when we do that. So, you know, kept this pretty high level, um, and this is how we're doing it here at ADS, and there's many other ways you would do this depending on your business and your industry, but hopefully it helps this kind of show one, um, more, one to three ways of defining that business value for automation. So next I wanted to just kind of show our current results because you can talk about that value all day long, but you're gonna be measured on it after the fact. Um, so we do keep an eye on all of these areas. So three main areas uh, to show today for current results uh, around increased productivity. Currently we're seeing about a 15% decrease in our AutoCAD technician draw time. So the time it really takes that technician to lay out the system and package it up. But in addition to that, we're also seeing a decrease in time for other areas of our process as a result of having this automation in place. When our customers use the tool first before coming to us for assistance, we actually get better information regarding their project, um, which allows us to turn that work around for them much more quickly. 
Um, internally, our internal designs many times go through a review process and we've been able to decrease our time for review since a lot of the information in the output files are automated, reducing the risk of errors. Um, so again, starting in one focus area and even within that, our efficiency expanded to other areas of our process. Within customer self-service in the middle, monthly we track the work being done by our internal team, which is represented by design services on this pie chart. Um, and we look at that versus the work being done in our online tool by our field sales team or our customer, and the customer is represented as external on this chart. So if you look at the numbers between our field sales team and our customers, those two user groups are doing about 64% of the work. And this has been just a very valuable tool for our sales team as it enables them to easily provide a design from a web-based tool without physically having to have AutoCAD or know how to use AutoCAD to do it. Um, this is also alleviating the work on our design services team and lets our internal team focus more on the advanced and complex work or just work that's further down in our project phase. Um, our customers are able to use the tool to compare different ADS projects, and we'll see that a little bit here in the demo, uh, compare different ADS products. Um, and they can do that with their project parameters, but they don't have to come to ADS in all of these cases, which is allowing our customers to move faster as well to get proposals in front of their customers. Um, so adding that value to our customers has been great. Um, and lastly, lead generation. Um, just a couple basic stats here, but with this tool that we have, we're currently seeing around 400 plus external, so customer users a month actively using our tool. This is resulting in about 800 plus external project opportunities for ADS a month. And again, it's, it's allowing us to reach a customer base that may not like traditional methods of sales calls. Um, so we have to bend to that. And this is just another way to reach that customer group. Um, and when we think back to COVID, this tool was extremely important to us as we navigated through that and continue to navigate our new normal. Many of our customers are still working from home, so we can't just walk into an office. Um, so this tool has provided us another way to reach our customer base, which has been great. So I'm gonna just keep rolling right along here. Um, hopefully from that last slide, you can see that at EDS, we feel pretty good about the investment that we've made in automation given our current results. But as everyone on this call knows, you don't get here without some challenges and some lessons learned. I do wanna caveat this portion of the presentation and just say that I can only speak to our experience at ADS and the tools that we've implemented. And all of these may not apply to you and what you look to do in your business, but we're still happy to share what we've learned um, if it's helpful. So four main things that um, I thought were appropriate today. The first just being that proper business analysis is really key to delivering value when you look to technology and automation. So it can be very easy to get caught up in the excitement of automation, but it is very important to perform a proper analysis of your current state and do enough root cause analysis of those problem areas to know that deploying technology or automation is really gonna solve or improve the process enough. Um, this analysis too really just creates your high level objectives that are gonna govern the project that you pursue. And it really might also tell you some areas where you need to look at standardization first before you start looking to automate your process. The second area is focus on delivering on high value portions of your work first. So if you decide to pursue automation, uh, depending on the complexity of your project or the work that you're automating, you may need to break it up into multiple phases. You know, focus on getting the work done that's gonna deliver the most value and get that up and running so you can learn from it and pivot on the next work as needed. The third bullet here, this is maybe one of the most important. Do not ignore the importance of good change management planning. 
So it's critical to know your stakeholders, including your end users, and what level of change management may be required with what you're about to implement. And for ADS, you know, we had to work with our internal design services team to show them the value of starting outside of AutoCAD to gain efficiency. We also had to shift a portion of our work from a 2D AutoCAD environment to a 3D inventor environment which didn't come without its challenges since we were very used to that 2D environment. We also had to work with our sales team to help them deliver the value proposition of using a self-service tool over our internal team. So I think you could spend a day talking about change management, but it's something you definitely need to plan for um, with this process. And the last bullet here is for us, you know, investment is not a one and done. And again, I'm caveating this by saying we can only speak to our experience at ADS, and this may vary a little bit, but whether you're working with a third-party vendor or you're looking to do automation with in-house resources, once you've launched the automation, there's typically a need to maintain and support it. So for maintenance, you may have changes to your business process or there's industry standards that affect what you've implemented. There may just be technology maintenance required as systems move to new versions. For support, it's really just having resources and a plan in place so that if there is a break or something goes wrong, you have um, an area or people to go to to get that fixed. So, and again, a lot of this goes into how you set expectations with the business about you know, diving into automation. So next area is really diving more into the specifics about what automation ADS has actually implemented at this, at this point. And so for the purposes of today's call, I tried to keep this description pretty high level, and it's easiest for me to talk through this based on the type of user accessing the automation tools that we've put in place. So for our external users, who would be our customers, which are typically civil engineers, and our field sales team, they access our web-based tool, which utilizes an Imaginet web-based platform. Once the user has gone onto the tool and configured their project, and they're ready for final design files, they make that request on the site, and the project processes in the cloud using Autodesk Forge processing. And what this is doing is taking advantage of automation with an inventor to create these files in the cloud and send back to the user in a format that they expect, which is actually an AutoCAD file, not an inventor file. So we give our users a bunch of output files, but there's AutoCAD, there's PDF, and then some additional Excel files that are based with design parameters and a bill of materials. For our internal design services users, they have a couple different paths they can take. They can go right out to that same web-based tool to configure their projects and obtain output via the cloud. And we will do this for some of our more simpler designs that we have, and our internal users can always take that output and make some minor tweaks before sending them out to our customers. Or they can go directly to our desktop tool, which is based in Inventor, to utilize the automation that's been built there for their workflows. And again, that was a change management piece for us of taking technicians who may have had some 3D experience but had primarily been working in a 2D AutoCAD environment. Um, they can also use the best of both worlds by beginning in the web tool to utilize efficiencies there before coming down to Inventor to complete the project using all those additional automations that have been built in the desktop tool. For our internal users, you know, that decision to go to the web versus inventor, it's really just the complexity of the project and how are we going to be the most efficient working through it. And again, I think I mentioned this, but for our AutoCAD technicians, the efficiency for us has been in two main areas of their work, so this draw time work. The first is actually design of the system, and we'll see this a little bit with the demo, but just working with the different project parameters and constraints to lay out the products on the site plan. And the second area of efficiency in this draw time is the final detail work required to really lay out the package. So 
So in another slide, I'm going to shift over and go into a live demo of our web-based tool. Um, but so before that, I did want to speak to some of the automation that has been done for the internal users on our desktop tool. So this is within Inventor, um, where Imagine it's helped us to implement a bunch of different things. So we're using automation within the Inventor program, and it's automating our workflows and our output package. And you can really think about this as just reducing number of clicks um, and reducing a lot of repetitive tasks that we do project after project. And what we've done um, with the help of Imagine It is build custom tools within Inventor based on our business logic to help us efficiently lay out a system. So you can see in this first graphic here, these tools you see are for our pipe systems that we have. So all of these are custom buttons based on how our users would design a system. At the, uh, the center image here, we have another dialog box that's been built. And you can see at the bottom, we've got a lot of our part numbers and descriptions and other information that's used to create a bill of materials and populate other areas of the output package. We're at the point where we're actually beginning to use some of this output over within our CRM to create efficiencies around some other processes that we have, you know, takeoffs, quoting, et cetera. In the last image that you see on the right, this is just a very simple example of the details that are automatically produced in our output package. This was really one of the biggest area of time saved for our AutoCAD technicians, just due to the time we were taking to create these details for every single project. Um, this has also been a big time savings for our reviewers since there's significantly less risk for errors with the automation that's been put into place. Okay, so at this point I am going to jump out of the slides and go over to our live online tool. So let me do that. And actually before immediately jumping to the tool, there are a couple different ways that you can access this. We've got a launch page on our website, which I'm showing here. And this is a great page. It does a lot of introduction to the tool and we've got a bunch of videos at the bottom for users just to assist and help them go through the workflows. Or you can go right to our tool itself. Um, that's shown here at designtool.ads-pipe.com. Uh, once you're in the tool, it's typically best that a user creates an account. This will give them access to all the features that the tool has to offer. It also allows them to save projects and come back and do revisions. I've already signed in for today's demo and I've begun working on a project. Hopefully everyone's able to see that. And what I've done so far is I've imported a PDF of the customer site plan, which is what you see in this background of the canvas area in black and white. And I've already gone ahead and actually designed the first system, which you can see outlined on the screen in yellow. If I jump to the bed one tab here at the bottom, I can see that bed in more detail and make modifications. But at this point, what we're going to do is design the second bed of the system. And that's going to be laid out right over here. So I'm in our system parameters area. Um, you can select any of our chamber models. So I talked a lot about pipe in the beginning, but this is another product that stores water underground. And I'm just gonna use our largest chamber model that we have available. And I'm just gonna enter some key project you know, parameters that our customers would have when going through a design. Um, and I'm just gonna click generate. So very quickly, we get the generation of the overall system. Uh, we've got some results at the top to see if we're in, within those project parameters that we were looking for. Um, one of the ways we've added some efficiencies here is, you know, for our internal team or a customer, maybe they want to see what this looks like as another chamber. So maybe if we move to one of our smaller products, and allow the system to generate, you can really quickly see and compare results using one product over another. Um, this would typically take drawing that second system and using another external tool um, to do those calculations. For today, we're gonna switch back to the MC7200, it's just a simpler system. 
Um, if the user is already, if they're really early in the design and the project phase, this might be enough detail and they could go and generate output and be done. But we also have built a bunch of other tools if the user wants to really further dial in the design and get closer to an installation ready drawing. So what I'm going to do is jump into our components section where we've got a bunch of these additional tools located. Um, and I'll run through this rather quickly, but um, we've got a bunch of pipes coming in. So we have to accommodate all the connections to the system. So the first thing is here, I want to accommodate this connection. So I'm going to be in remove mode and I'm just going to remove some chambers. And then I would like to add an inlet here. I'm just going to add that in, you know, again, one click over many, uh, if we were to do this manually in AutoCAD. Um, and you can see a bunch of dialog boxes with ways to modify the system. We typically would make that connection so I can toggle that on very quickly. Um, there's a lot of real time results happening across the top and within these dialog boxes for the user. And Typically for us, that would have meant using another external tool, but we've built all of that into this one tool for our users. Uh, if I go down to the bottom, I've got another inlet that I need to accommodate. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna get a warning because there was already something there so I can very easily modify that. And we're able to build a lot of different things like that into this to help the user through the process. When I generated this system, it just did a generic outlet down here. We're just going to remove that for now. Let's take, take care of that. And then if I scroll up to the top, I'd like to put an outlet up here, but I need to modify this manifold. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that. Uh, if I select this, it'll let me do that. I'm going to edit. And just get those stubs. And there's you know, you can modify your structure size, you can modify the manifold, and all of that is impacting flow rate calculations and spacing, and this will all be to scale on that background for the user. And then, you know, we, we don't just have to do perfect rectangles. I can change my mode here. I can select a row, and I can even begin to shift this down very, very quickly. Um, and maybe I want to add my outlet back over here. And there we go. Um, and there's other accessories that the user, you know, can start adding based on their design. But really here in a matter of minutes, we've designed the second system. Again, a bunch of parameters for that customer to be checking in real time to ensure they're meeting the requirements of their project. And if they're satisfied at this point, they can request drawings, which will initiate that cloud processing that we talked about. And I'm just going to show a couple examples of what's being processed just to point to some of that automation that's been built in here. Um, second. So this is the PDF version of the AutoCAD file that the user would get. So there's basic specification information based on the products being used. We then have these layout pages, all of which have been automated. And the system does this for a varying amount of sizes. So this system has 60 chambers. We can do over 2,000 chambers in most cases and it scales it appropriately. It adds all the notes and all the elevations and flow rates appropriately around the system. So this was the first bed. The second bed is the one that we just designed together. Um, so you can see some of that detail and how that resulted in the output. And again, this is a big area of where we're saving time internally. And then following that are just a bunch of standard details, again, all specific to the products that were utilized within the design. You can see that here. And then at the end, we like to always kind of show what the system looks like on top of that site plan. Um, so you can see that for each of the beds and then one together. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna bring up the AutoCAD file, but it would be laid out in a very similar manner and that AutoCAD file can be manipulated. So the customer could copy and paste into their greater site plan that they have in AutoCAD, 
or they could make some quick modifications to this CAD file that we sent them and then move it over. We also have a couple Excel files, again, all specific to the bed. So this is just a design file that the engineer needs to help with their hydraulic modeling. Um, so it takes all the parameters and adds them in. And then I mentioned earlier a bill of materials. So a nice bill of materials to help do estimates early on. Um, and again, you know, there's, there's opportunity with integrations to other platforms that you may already have. And that's definitely something that we're looking at as well here at ADS. So that is going to do it for me. Again, I really appreciate everyone's, uh, everyone coming and spending some time here today with us on this call. Um, I, I said it earlier, but we are definitely continuing to invest in this automation. And I just hope this information was helpful to all of you who may be considering it. And with that, I will hand it back over to Scott. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. That was a great presentation. And I think uh, I was involved with ADS and plant to start in the early stages of the wild idea of this automation tool, probably four or five years ago. I think those conversations started and it's great to see how, how far it's come and the value that it's added to your business. So um, last, going to close with a couple of things and open up for Q&A is, you know, types of automation. Uh, that we're seeing most commonly in today's world. And you know, there's really four categories I put them in personally. I mean, other people put them in other categories, but I talk about robotic process automation quite a bit or RPA. Um, there's all sorts of IT initiatives, technology initiatives around robotic process automation tools. Um, and really in my mind is you have to teach the robot to do something for you. And then the robot can do something for you. And, you know, we can, we have a couple tools within Imagine or organization that we've developed for the automations for Autodesk, um, exchanging data between the Forge platform and your CRM or your ERP, for instance. Um, so those are skills that we taught these robot tools to do. Um, workflow automation, I think the most popular one that people talk about now is Power Automate by, by Microsoft because everybody gets it. Um, but you know that's about exchanging data between platforms as well but it's automating the process of, hey, I need to copy paste this information from Excel to Word, or I need to um, extract this information from a uh, DWG file or a PDF file um, to uh, design something on top of, similar to how Kelly showed uh, the PDF background to their design tool. Um, Chatbots, you know, I think this is probably, might be the next evolution in, in uh, configurator type tools is imagine just having a conversation with the ADS design tool instead of having to type in the details um, about the design so that it designs it for you. Um, instead of doing all those button clickings or data entry points that you need to do, you just tell it what you need to what you need to design and it could design it. And I think the probably the, the one item on here that's probably the hardest to achieve that it's really impressive to see the ADS tool has is the documentation automation. Um, from the detailing perspective and automating a lot of those processes so that there's not mistakes in the detailed drawings and the detailed drawings don't need a lot heavy lift from people um, not only doing quality assurance on them, but um, just generating them to begin with in, in AutoCAD. And automation and documentation can be, can be really difficult, be variance on the size of the details and the size of the text and dimensions of text, all those other sorts of things that are are really challenging to automate. <clears throat> so uh, the way that we that I kind of look at it is pretty much Kelly uh, touched upon almost all these opportunities for automation within their organization is you know processing data. It's the the document management as you generate a design that it's generating the bill of materials, the the drawings that go with it, and keeping all that information related so they can they can get better cost estimates from their designs. Um, they can share that data with their ERP system for ordering procurement. Um, the, she mentioned the quality control aspect of um, now our documents are, are, are automated, automatically generated, re reduces chance for error in, in those documents. The customer service experience, it's, it was great to hear some, some details around that, how civil engineering firms and 
contractors are using the ADS design tools just because it's easier um, for them. They know what they, they want sometimes and they just need to configure those options. And that's really introduced uh, ADS to a new um, business development opportunities, new pipeline opportunities that Kelly had mentioned, in increase in sales efficiency. Um, where we've invested mostly in our automation, whether it be inside uh, the management organization tools that we use or tools that we use to help customers, um, we have two uh, what I consider robotic process automation tools that we've developed. One called our Managed Clarity Platform, which focuses in on AutoCAD and, and Revit automations and things that we've taught that, that robot to do. We have our Imagine Pulse platform, which is uh, we use to, to integrate uh, things like from the Autodesk Forge environment to um, uh, ERP system, Salesforce, NetSuites, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, we use the Autodesk platform services, Forge Fusion. Uh, as Kelly mentioned, we, we use Forge quite a bit on the ADS automation tools. It's a great technology that Autodesk has exposed. Lots of great APIs for Revit automation and for inventor automation, as well as um, data, data management automation. And probably the biggest area where we're doing a, uh, most of our consulting projects right now is the engineering configurator side, similar to ADS is, hey, we need this product configured for our site design or for a building manufacturer, uh, windows, doors, um, equipment that goes in buildings, lots of different opportunities for uh, those manufacturers to automate and to, to create configurators. So with that, I am going to open it up to any questions um, or comments. Um, Ellen, I know Ellen's on the phone. If anybody else has anything to add, um, I just want to thank Kelly and, and ADS for their time. They've been a great partner and, and work with the Imagine team and, and challenging us and, and make us a great company and, and, and thinking outside the box on how to solve some problems.